Duncan to Mox the Week and Dara Green. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Nathan Caton and Mickey Flanagan, Chris Addison, Hugh Dennis and Stuart Francis. We start, as ever, with a round called Headliners. Here's a picture of the Prime Minister speaking recently. But what does C-A-T-L stand for? Has he just gone really straight? Is he saying, cut some ting lack? <laughs> I believe that's how, 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 yes, how yes, people... Yeah, on the street, yes, <laughs> Is it C-N-A totally looted? <laughs> Is it, in fact, a lot of the stores that were looted that Cameron has never set foot in in his life? Costcutter, Argos, Tesco's, Lidl. <laughs> Is it uh, Cameron attempts tit lunge? <laughs> Samantha. <laughs> it's, it's dancing. It looks like he's dancing. It's Cameron attempts the lambada. <laughs> Is it Cameron's a tosser? Lol. <laughs> That's good. Or is it much, much more simple? He's in a market, is he going, carrots and toms, lovely! <laughs> <laughs> is it, is it actually more simple? Is it more simple? Go on. Is it, in fact, couldn't arrange a turd in a lavatory? <laughs> do, you, do you often find yourself arranging turds in lavatory? <laughs> well, that has come oh. out at entirely the wrong angle. <laughs> it displeases me. Pass me the yeah. turd wrangling uh, implement. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, the correct answer, please. Is it Cameron advocates tough love? Very good, thank you very much, you, Dennis. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> um, yes, the answer I was looking for was Cameron advocates tough love. This is the news that David Cameron has said those involved in the recent riots needed tough love as he <laughs> promised to deal with Britain's estimated 120,000 problem families. Speaking on Radio 4's Today programme this week, the Prime Minister pledged to fund help for these families whilst also continuing to be tough on those who have broken the law. Now, we can talk about the riots, but this is obviously we're off air for a number of weeks and it's difficult to conflate all these stories. Basically, News of the World got shut down because of somebody's telephone got broken and they went on the rampage of staff. And <laughs> they trashed London and then because of that, Gaddafi's gone. That's the gist. Right? <laughs> That's what happened during the summer, so that's just to be a what, what happened was, isn't it, the police, they, they shot dead a man in Tottenham. Yeah. And that led to a lot of resentment in Tottenham, uh, and in Croydon, and in parts of Birmingham. Yeah. And specifically in Miss Selfridges in Manchester. A lot of resentment there. A lot of anger, a lot of anger about that guy. A lot of yeah. people, the only way they could cope with that resentment, it seemed, was to take home a new pair of trainers. Yeah. <laughs> It wasn't just that one issue, though, was it? There was a because the reporters were saying when people were saying this is a protest, there was a reporter talking to a writer who said, "Well, why are you writing?" And he went, "Well, uh, it's the Iraq War, isn't it?" <laughs> That's eight years ago. Yeah. But, well, I thought about writing at the time, but I thought I'd wait for this Xbox to come out. In my area, they looted um, a Tesco Metro, and there's a picture on the internet. You guys might have seen it of this young guy. He's posing outside Tesco before he just stolen. But what you've just stolen is a massive bag of Tesco value basmati rice. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you lose basmati rice? I mean, I'm not the coolest person in the world, but I'm pretty sure basmati rice isn't massive on the streets, right? <laughs> <laughs> I've been walking in London, I've heard people go, what's a weed? What's a crack? Mm. I've never heard someone go, basmati. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw a Okay. Yeah, not just as basmati, but if you cut it with pilau. Uh, <laughs> Imagine the kid's going through the shelves. I've got to get some cumin, man. I've got to find it. <laughs> On the local news website, there was a witness, this girl, who said, yeah, I heard they were going to smash uh, Primark and burn it, so I went to have a look. I only went and look. I then go in. I'm banned from Primark. <laughs> That's what we need. You know, Law-abiding yeah. looters. <laughs> in Chiswick, there's one shop in Chiswick uh, boarded themselves up. Just one. Uh, I, I was just already, but it was a snappy snaps. Uh, <laughs> and, it was, and it boarded themselves up like, because oh, well, we're obviously, well, you know, people are going to go, jigsaws with children's faces on them. <laughs> Mouse mats. Uh, and, uh, but the weird thing was they bought up and they put a big sign up thing saying still open for business. And you're going to go, but you're snappy snaps. Why don't you take a photograph of the shop, print it really massively, <laughs> stick it on the board, and then you look 
like you're open for business. George Michael would still hit it. Yeah, sure. My favourite comment on the whole riots it ga- came from Hazel Blears on Sky TV. And she said she didn't know why the kids weren't in school, forgetting it was usually happening in an evening in August. <laughs> Sadly missed in government, that woman, isn't she? Do you not think that the punishment should fit the crime, though? If you rob an electrical store, like Curry, sure, you should be fined, but pay nothing this year, and then pay... (laughs) 24 (laughs) monthly instalments. If you're looting stuff from Curry's, you're going to get done 90 quid for the three-year extended warranty. (laughs) I was a victim of the looting because, um... It was... You know Peckham is near where I live. Not that near. Um, <laughs> uh, I've done okay. And, um, <laughs> so, but it is close enough that we could see the flames. And, um, <laughs> and due to this, the next night I went down my off licence to get a, some cans of beer. Shut. Half past four. I thought, this, is, this could not be tolerated. <laughs> it's affecting ordinary working people now. <laughs> uh, I just caved his windows in and took a few cans of beer. <laughs> Did you see the geezer who bent over in front of about 500 coppers, mooned them, not only mooned them, pulled the cheeks of his arse apart? <laughs> Proper old school cop for that. <laughs> is is that see inter- all these coppers thinking? <laughs> <laughs> I should have worked harder at school. Really Mr. Copper's not looking at their trunks and going, if only I could. <laughs> I do think the tough love thing might work, though. Don't you? Not the tough bit, but the love. I mean, if I was... If I was, uh, me. <laughs> Dave, David Cameron said he wanted the police to be able to have uh, water cannon and plastic bullets at their disposal. And you think they're, they're very different things there, aren't they? You know, I've, I've always quite liked the idea of water cannon. It always sounds... I'm sure it is painful, but it always looks like it might be a bit of a laugh, doesn't it? <laughs> A bit like Thought Park Extreme without having to pay the 30 quid. You know? Once the bloke bending down, parting his arse cheeks, he could get some colonic irrigation on. There'd be a lot of people cleaning their riot shields pretty carefully after that. <laughs> Yeah, there is a thing. Water, water cans and uh, rubber boats are both incredibly violent. They're, they're, you know, they're used in the north, and they're, they're, they're not good things, right? Although they sound whimsical. They sound like, for the, oh no, they've taken over the bouncy castle. Get out the rubber bullets. Uh, so they, oh, water cannon. Oh, now I've got a wet T-shirt. Sexy time. Uh, <laughs> I think, I think kids have got too much, they've got too much technology because that's how they organise it, like Blackberry, Twitter, Facebook. Like, when I was a kid, which wasn't that long ago, we didn't have all of that. Like, we, I, we didn't even have phones. I mean, we had house phones, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but, but when I was a kid, you, I couldn't go to my family and ask to use the house phone to call my friends. My family, they just look at me and go, for and a friend, for and a friend. <laughs> we look like Chris Tarrant. <laughs> You carry it. It's, it's, uh, uh, yeah, um. Yeah, all right. We're having a riot. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take down the system. Go away! Stop listening in on my conversation! <laughs> I hate you! <laughs> right, I'm about to be like, come on, how long does it take to organise a bleeding riot? <laughs> It cost that phone. Yeah, come on, get the phone. Uh, okay, why has the sentencing of the rioters been criticised? Because well, it's uh, been incredibly harsh, has it? Yes. People, yeah. been, people have been sent away for just saying that there was going to be a riot. Now that is ridiculous. If that is the case, that's at least four years each for each of the Kaiser Chiefs. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, as their lawyer, I would like to point out that they only predicted a riot. They did. <laughs> One young man uh, was sentenced to 16 months uh, in, in prison for uh, looting a uh, boots, and that's the bad news. The good news, what he stole was lubricant, so... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> always, I always like a happy ending, don't you? I, I... <laughs> well, that happy ending is the best you can hope for. Uh, <laughs> sorry, it's a sex industry term. Uh, so... <laughs> He explained as though part of it. Yeah. Yeah. How bad is the yes, sex industry now yes. that you are its representative? What? <laughs>
Well, he think, isn't the Kaiser Chiefs can't afford a better lawyer than you, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's a fair point, a fair point. Okay, at the end of that round, the points go to Chris Hewitt Stewart. <laughs> now we play a round called Rise of the Planet of the Japes. This game <laughs> involves Andy Stewart and Nathan, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand-up challenge. I launched a wheel of news, and wherever it chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. The winner, who is whoever, I think, is the funniest. OK, here we go. The first subject is... the economy. Who wants to come in on that? Andy Parsons. <laughs> now, uh, the economy not going very well, is it? So, apparently, a lot of people are having to shop <laughs> in cheaper <laughs> supermarkets. And you can understand why Waitrose might want to consider their price structure. I was in there recently, eight pounds for a chicken. And what's their slogan? Never knowingly undersold. Where do they do their price comparisons? <laughs> Not a supermarket, you can get two chickens for two quid. That is eight chickens for eight pounds. <laughs> and it might not be the same quality, but let's face it, you could chuck six chickens away, you'd still be a chicken up. <laughs> I've done the maths for you there, ladies and gentlemen. Waitrose have introduced a new own brand range, Essential. I bet you would like to know what Waitrose regard as Essential. <laughs> Cherry cheesecake. <laughs> roast vegetable couscous. <laughs> apple yum yum. Essential. <laughs> oh, I was in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. I only had the bare essentials. <laughs> Mixed leaf salad, Italian mozzarella, and a vanilla candle. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much. OK, let's spin the wheel again. And the subject is the older generation. Let's spin that. Nathan. Cool. Older generation. Um, I've got a very eccentric grandma. Uh, recently, she's, uh, she's been starting to get involved in my love life. Right? Um, obviously, not, not too involved, obviously. <laughs> She's not in my bedroom going, go on here, time. that's my boy! <laughs> <laughs> no, but whenever I go to my grandma's house, she's like, on here, time. you have a girlfriend? You have a girlfriend? Right? But she's very old school, and she doesn't realise the world we live in now is very multicultural. You know, my grandma, she's like, Nathan, Nathan, we never have a girlfriend. Make sure. Make sure. West Indian. <laughs> There's no big no white girl in my house. <laughs> That's a problem. I'm not going to lie. I like black girls. I like white girls, you know. I don't care about skin colour. As far as I'm concerned, if you've got a vagina and a Nando's loyalty card... <laughs> it's cool. I don't care about skin colour, you know. I like black girls. I like white girls. I can always say, chocolate is delicious, tasty and sweet. <laughs> but milk is good for you. <laughs> I said that to my grandma and she just went, not when you're lactose intolerant. <laughs> That leaves us with Stuart. Let's see what topic you've been left with. Let's spin the wheel. And the topic is family. <laughs> I heard that my sister's into bestiality. I'll be a monkey's uncle. Through no fault of his own, my uncle crashed his car into a lemon tree. He's still bitter and twisted. <laughs> my other uncle, who's missing an arm, hates the way I mock him. <laughs> Doesn't like when I show off. My older brother's an expert on uh, erectile dysfunction. He's now semi-retired. <laughs> I don't like the way my kids are always quick to blame other people. Uh, they get that from their mom. <laughs> I get my tendency to gouge from my mom. I got my father's eyes. 